the last five years, and they're coming into another hostile environment tonight. Number 11, Baylor, and number 25, BYU, and we're underway in Pro Bowl. After a three-game losing streak, Baylor has won five of their last six. And a corner three off the get-go from Jalen Bridges. You have got to be careful not to overhelp on that penetration. Because if you if you help on that drive, you are now one pass away, and that's where Baylor gets a ton of their threes on those kickouts. Baylor shoots their threes at 40%. They are fourth in the country in three-point shooting against a team that makes among the most threes per game in the country as BYU averages 11 and a half made threes a game, which is third. Well, that, that percentage for Baylor is over the course of the entire season. They came into conference play not shooting it well. And so they're only shooting at 35% in conference play, but they're ticking up. And part of that's been Jaden Dunn. Trevin Nell missing from the corner. The rebound tipped out to Jacoby Walter for Baylor. Walter drives, reverse, and Ooh. one. What a finish from Jacoby Walter, the freshman. You know, his shooting numbers have not been good, certainly from three. But he has become an all-around basketball player, and this is what he's starting to do really well. He's got the matchup against Ali Khalifa. He can certainly go by him. The help comes late, and Jacoby Walter is driving the ball now. Teams are flying at him, taking away that three. What a great finish. For the preseason Big 12 freshman of the year. Seventh in the Big 12 in foul shooting at 86%, and it's a 6 nothing lead for Baylor. Here's Ali Khalifa, their point center, if you will. Mismatch down low. Back in his way in is Khalifa. Walter coming from the blind side. Khalifa rips it back away. Trevin Nell missing a three. And the rebound on the offensive end for Dallin Hall for BYU. Three rims out for Khalifa. Spencer Johnson hustling for the Cougars. Trevin Nell fumbles it away. Jalen Bridges attacks. 8 nothing, Baylor. Well, BYU continues to not shoot it well. Did not shoot it well in that game against Oklahoma State. They had some really good cracks at it on that last possession. And what a start for the Baylor Bears. Trevin Nell denied by Eve Misi. Noah Waterman breaks the seal for the Cougars. And that's big for Noah Waterman and for BYU. Has not shot it well. Only 28% for three in their last five. A good extra pass by Ali Khalifa to find Waterman. Loose ball, last touch by BYU. You know, this possession, a lost one for BYU. Two offensive rebounds, you come away with no points. And there goes Baylor off and running. And that nice little extra pass by Khalifa to find Waterman. That's a good sign for BYU. Shot clock down to 10. And a three. Jaden Nunn. And it's 11-3 Baylor. Again, it's an overhelp. You are coming too far over if you're Noah Waterman to help on that drive. Baylor has hit their first four shots from the floor, including two threes. Noah Waterman, and the rebound, Jalen Bridges for Baylor. A.J. Dennis pressured in the corner. Fall away, and the rebound, ripped away by Noah Waterman for the Cougars. Ali Khalifa, three. It's a big three for Khalifa because you got to keep Eve Nisi honest. 
And that's the challenge for Misi. You're not comfortable guarding a center who facilitates offense and can knock down that perimeter three. Misi wants to protect the basket, but Khalifa will pull him away from the hoop. And a foul called and a block on Spencer Johnson of the Cougars. Here's his three from Baylor, and BYU's going to load up on this penetration. The problem is that skip pass is drilled into Baylor. They are so good finding that opposite corner three. And then Eve Misi again, a little bit of overhelp. You don't need to help on Dallin Hall there because of Khalifa's ability to shoot it. Subs for Baylor, Josh Ojamuna checks in, the sophomore from Nigeria. And Langston Love, who's missed the last three games with an injury, been dealing with an ankle issue recently. But Langston Love, an early sub for Scott Drew. Love is their leading scorer in conference play. He's going to be the sixth man of the year in the conference. The lob and the finish by Josh Ojamwana. That Ray J. Dennis to either Ojanwuna or Misi Lob is one of the toughest things to defend in the Big 12. Rattles out for Spencer Johnson. Dallin Hall on the offensive glass in the reverse. The BYU. first two-point field goal for BYU. BYU's guards are such good rebounders. Dallin Hall, Spencer Johnson, both those guys will sneak in there, especially on the offensive glass. Five on the shot clock. Ali Khalifa reads it and steals it for BYU. And a foul out top. And it's on Baylor, the first on Langston Love. Baylor, the top three-point shooting team in the country. They drive, they stay on he was unconscious, hit some really tough shots. You know, they, he's their best player. Uh, he, he's terrific defensively. He's a really good guard rebounder. And he's starting to really go, get it going, scoring the basketball. Better than Filipowski? Yes, he is their best player. Good challenge, though. I understand where you're coming from. Just for conversation's sake. <laughs> Not saying I disagree with you. Right, you're good. Fusini Traore checks in Jackson Robinson also for BYU as it got stripped out of bounds off of Fusini Traore and it belongs to Baylor. Really good defense. You know, it's a different type of a preparation between Khalifa and Traore. Nice job by Jay Nunn coming over as that tag defender forcing the turnover. Also in Richie Saunders for BYU. Made a nun into the key. Langston Love fires a three. What a start. It continues. Baylor three for three from long range. And the balance from three different guys. I mean, that's where they come at you in waves. You kind of have to pick your poison. Great defense by Baylor inside. Richie Saunders to the basket. Wow. And what a play by Saunders with the left hand. And BYU's going to have to put the ball on the ground. They're going to have to drive it tonight. They're going to have to put some pressure on Baylor's defense. Jaden Nunn weaves his way to the basket and lays it in. You know, BYU's been in drop coverage on these ball screens. It's going to be tough because these Baylor guards all crafty off of that ball screen, especially against that drop coverage. Lucini Triori down low. Out of the double team. Trevin Nell had a clean look. Deflected out by... BYU, it belongs to Baylor. Crowd disagrees. There's his ball screen. Jaden Nunn refuses it. Now he puts the defender, Jackson Robinson, in jail. And then how about the carve-out by Ojan Wuna 
giving one a lane. Checking in for Baylor for the first time. Caleb Lohner, the senior who began his college career at BYU, played two years here, and now a second year with Baylor. And you know it's an emotional homecoming for him. His first trip back inside the Marriott Center since he played for BYU as Jacoby Walter called for traveling. So there is Lohner. He's been off the bench all season for Scott Drew. Started 44 games over his first two years with BYU. And emotional for a number of reasons. His family lives here in Provo. His dad, Matt, played here at BYU in the early 90s. As Dallin Hall way off on an open three. And a foul, and it's on Dallin Hall of BYU. Ray Stewart checking in for Mark Pope at BYU. But Baylor, they're so efficient, Chris, to start this game seven for eight from the floor. Yeah. And it's been a number of different guys. And, and, you know, again, the struggle area has been BYU's defense over the last two games. Illegal screen, offensive foul on Caleb Lohner. He's an energy guy. You know, doesn't play a whole lot of minutes. Play more in the first half as Scott Drew tries to stretch his bench and he did not move into that screen. But he's the muscle guy. You can tell by the arms. <laughs> That used to happen in a lot in practice here between Trevin Nell and Caleb Lohner. Dumped inside. At the rim. And one. Fulton Traore for BYU. They're not booing. They're foozing. Just now. Deontay George, and then uh, you're looking at a couple first-round picks here on Baylor's team tonight. And Jacoby Walter and Eve Nisi. First free throw for BYU tonight, Fusini Traore. And he nails it, 78 for center. Five-point lead for Baylor, and it's just been in the last few weeks that Fusini Traore really regaining his form from that hamstring injury, which he suffered early in the season. Yeah, the BYU fans all over Caleb Lohner. And he expected that coming in. It's not a shock to his system. Jaden Nunn, tough shot. And the rebound, Spencer Johnson for BYU. Jackson Robinson, a transition three. And a foul going for the rebound, and it's on Baylor. Well, offensive glass it is really saved BYU here in this early going of this half. A quick shot, probably not a great shot, but we're accustomed to that with Jackson Robinson, and then a nice job by Trey Stewart following it and drawing a foul. Man, what a physical confrontation. And the second foul on Jaden Nunn. That is adding insult to, <laughs> oh. well, injury to insult. At least, at least you got Langston Love, you know, back in the fold now off your bench. They go to freshman Miro Little. And the floater by Jackson Robinson. Gets the zone miss. And he goes up, left it short. There was the presence of Eve Misi down low. Miro Little up and under. The freshman banks it in. And Miro Little, who'd been scoreless in 11 of the last 12 games, with a quick bucket. Well, their bench outside of Langston Love does not give them much. Really, no scoring at all, so that's big. Richie Saunders. And the long rebound tracked down by Eve Misi for Baylor. Misi. And he draws contact. This is Miro Little, the freshman from Finland. He's gotten a lot of run, especially with Langston Love out the last three games, and he's not afraid. 
Again, he's got a lot of development to go, but he's not afraid. He's played internationally. Strong move there. And that's where, you know, in the second half of that first matchup, Roxy, where Baylor really started to carve BYU up, was just in those one-on-ones driving the basketball. Jacoby Walter in and out, back in. Tough shot on the baseline. Largest lead for Baylor. BYU just two for 11 from three to start the game. Ali Khalifa cleans it up. Again, the offensive glass has, has been big because they haven't made threes and they're missing some layups right around the basket. Jacoby Walter launching. And the rebound falls to Jackson Robinson for BYU. Step back, tough shot, and it rattles in. Jackson Robinson, there's that wild card. There it is. And he makes them. He's a tough shot maker, so it becomes incredibly enticing. Now the crowd becoming a factor at the Marriott Center. Richie Saunders claims the miss for the Cougars. Spencer Johnson fouled on the drive by Jacoby Walter. It's a good decision by Johnson. You know, again, put the pressure on Baylor's defense. You know, you don't have to take the first three. BYU is skilled enough and they're talented enough. They run good stuff that they can work to get a better shot. And there, you know, Spencer Johnson, nice little shot fake, and then putting the pressure on Baylor's defense and drawing a foul. Jackson Robinson grabbed off the inbound. And the foul on the floor committed by Baylor. It's the first on Ray J. Dennis. Sixth team foul against the Bears. So the next one will put BYU into the bonus for the rest of half number one. Noah Waterman launching a three. That's way off, and the rebound is Joshua John went up for Baylor. A John went up underneath. Amira Little swatted by Ali Khalifa. And the rebound falls to Jalen Bridges on the reload. Another miss from Ray J. Dennis and a foul going for the rebound. And it's on BYU. These long rebounds being chased down by Baylor. And that is an area where Baylor excels. They're averaging 12 offensive rebounds a game. And it starts with the two bigs. Ojan Wuna and Eve Misi are always on the offensive glass. And then you sprinkle in Jalen Bridges and Jacoby Walter. They attack the glass. Baylor has led from the outset. Off the inbound, Jalen Bridges missing a three. And there's Ali Khalifa the rebound. Good job getting back by Baylor. Baylor's missed their last five shots for the floor. The step back three, Spencer Johnson. Welcome those of you just joining us to the Marriott Center. Number 11 Baylor who jumped out to a lead as large as nine early. An eight nothing run for BYU was trimmed it to one. With Chris Patola and our ESPN crew, Roxy Bernstein with you from Provo, Utah. The two highest scoring teams in the Big 12. Jalen Bridges launching a three, oh. and he banks it in. Man. I was just about to say, BYU has started to string some stops together, and then Jalen Bridges goes high glass. He leads Baylor with eight. He had a season high 25 in the first matchup with BYU in Waco. 
Four of seven now from three for Baylor. Shot clock at five. Dallin Hall. Lost the handle, picked up. Baylor looks to leak out and run. Miro oh. Little is grabbed from behind, yeah. and that's a flagrant. No and play. Little is still down. Immediately the signal for a flagrant as Miro Little is still down under the basket. It almost had like horse collar tackle types of vibes on that play. There's a way to make that play, you know, the teams have a no layup policy. There's a way to make that without doing it as awkwardly as Saunders did. Miro Little at the line for the flagrant one. And the freshman from Finland rattles them both in. And again, because of the flagrant one, it is a Baylor basketball as we take a look at our game notes. And for the Baylor Bears, one of two teams in the country with six players averaging in double digits. Baylor won the last meeting between these two teams. And after a three-game losing streak, Baylor has won five of their last six. While BYU trying to bounce back from a loss against Oklahoma State, where they had won four of their previous five. Trevin Nell drains a three for his first points. These shooters for BYU are starting to get loose in the half court a little bit. Top two scoring teams in the Big 12. Baylor averages 83 a game. BYU averages 83 and a half a game. Already five threes for BYU. They make the third most per game in the country. 11 and a half is caught. Noah Waterman rams it home. <laughs> Ali Khalifa, 41 assists in conference play. He was center that averages four assists a game. Steal, Dallin Hall knocked it away. Three on two for BYU. Hall, three. Timeout, Baylor. First lead for BYU. 30-second timeout. BYU to take their first lead. They've trailed by as many as nine here early in this game. As BYU has made six threes, and they started slow from the outside. Well, and Baylor started hot. You know, that was kind of how Baylor jumped out to that early lead. But BYU's defense has stood up, and now they're making shots. Inside 10 to shoot, Jacoby Walter. Trying to create. Jalen Bridges off balance. Got it to go and we're tied. And Noah Waterman hobbling back up the other way. May have rolled his ankle. And Bridges has 10 to lead all scorers. And he had the season high 25 against BYU the first time. Someone about playing against BYU brings out the best in Jalen Bridges. Jackson Robinson missing the one foot step back and Josh O'John went on the rebound for Baylor. And a foul out top. That's the second on Dallin Hall. You know, when things break down for Baylor offensively, and sometimes they're at their best. It gets into a driving kick, and that's when Noah Waterman came down awkwardly on his ankle. It looked like he came down on his teammate. For the second foul on Dallin Hall. And that's the seventh team foul in BYU. So Langston Love for a one and one. Hall will sit with the two fouls and 426 left in the half. But a good sight for Baylor to see Langston Love. Available for Scott Drew after missing the last three games. Missed the front end, but the offensive rebound, Jalen Bridges. 
Jacoby Walter missing from deep, and Trevin Nell secures the rebound for the Cougars. Jackson Robinson. And the long rebound, Eat Misi. Here comes Baylor, hustling back the other way. Denied by Jackson Robinson. Jackson Robinson launching, and he's way off on that three, out of bounds. And it goes to Baylor, tie game. 3.44 to go, first half in Provo, Utah. Houston, and BYU currently sitting in seventh in the Big 12 as a look at the top seven. And that huge showdown that, Chris, that Baylor has coming up on Saturday against Kelvin Sampson in Houston. Of course, Houston coming off a, a big win last night. Eat Meese off the lob. He has so much room to operate. Again, that Dennis to, to Meese lob is one of the toughest things to defend in a Big 12. And part of it is the spacing that the threat of the perimeter shot Baylor has around. Trevin Nell gets three for the Cougars. Ties the game at 31. Last 10 minutes here this half, Roxy. BYU's got a lot more at the basket. Is that the biggest adjustment you've seen since the, the rough start for BYU? Yeah, I, I think so. Not as volume from three. Here's that slip. Again, look at all those perimeter defenders. They have to stay home on the shooting. And that's what opens up. It's not really well defended. And again, if you're going to play Ray J. Dennis in drop coverage, I, I think you're going to hurt yourself. He is too good against that coverage. Ali Khalifa straight on. Three! Second three for the BYU big man. Largest lead for the Cougars. Eve Misi is over helping. You cannot leave Khalifa. And he's not comfortable. Misi just not used to defending a big guy like Khalifa with that skill set. Five to shoot, Ray J. Dennis. Weaves his way around, and a foul on Jackson Robinson. Like you said, Roxy, Khalifa's second three. This is, you've got to stay home. You either got to switch that with the shooting Khalifa, or you've got to stay higher with the ball. And again, that's just too much with the shooting that Khalifa has, and that's the second time that has happened to Eve Misi. Would you look to defend him with a smaller guy who might be more comfortable in the perimeter? No. But if, if you end up having to switch, again, if they bring Triori in, that's the difference. But you, you, I mean, who are you going to put Nisi on if you if you play him with a smaller? Our Saturday slate highlighted by these matchups on ESPN and the app. Number 10, North Carolina hosting Virginia in a Sonic blockbuster at 4 Eastern. Then on to the Big 12. Number nine, Kansas and Texas. So we cap it off. Texas A&M and number five, Tennessee. Big Saturday slate on ESPN as Ray J. Dennis hits both for Baylor. First points for Ray J. Dennis tonight. There's over 1,800 career points at his three stops. Spencer Johnson. Left it short, tipped in his own miss, and he's fouled. That'll go as the eighth offensive rebound of this first half for BYU. It's a big part of, of supplementing their offense, and these guards for BYU are outstanding rebounders. Spencer Johnson is BYU's leading rebounder in conference play. They're constantly sneaking in there, he and Dallin Hall. And Johnson's done a nice job driving it. Has not shot it well in this game, has not shot it well... In their last five games, he's done a nice job putting his head down and initiating contact. These are two of the best rebounding teams in the country. You look at their rebound margin. Baylor's a plus six, BYU's a plus seven and a half per game.
A terrific response from BYU after trailing by as many as nine early. And a foul on Trevin Nell that will send Miro Little to the line for Baylor. First on Nell. Miro Little's giving Baylor some good minutes off of their bench. And it, you know, again, when it, things break down, that's almost when Baylor is at their best. Because it gets into drive and kick, forces the defense into help and recover. And some confusion on the floor because that was the ninth team foul on BYU. And the officials, some indecision about whether it was a one and one or a two shot foul. That's why we have the stoppage here. And Tony Padilla coming to explain it to Scott Drew that it should have been a one and one. And they will go to the possession arrow to determine who's got the basketball. And it belongs to BYU off the arrow. Final 80 seconds of this first half. First sign of zone we've seen from Baylor. Jackson Robinson. Spencer Johnson, another offensive rebound for BYU. And another three for Ali Khalifa. And a foul will send Jacoby Walter to the line. Another offensive rebound. Spencer Johnson has been maniacal on the offensive glass. And again, that's where Eve Misi gets sucked in. He's just not used to having to stay home on that shooter like Khalifa. That's his third three in his first half. And that's the third foul in Richie Saunders of BYU in this first half. And now with Baylor into the double bonus. Two shots for Jacoby Walter. One for one for the line already. One area, that foul line was a problem area for BYU in the first matchup. Baylor took 28 free throws in that game. A lot of it having to do within the second half. Baylor just driving their matchup. I mean, they just drove the heck out of the ball in the second half of the first matchup. Walter now with seven. And the lead at five for BYU. BYU led at the half in that first matchup, 39-33, to see Baylor respond with 48 second-half points on their home floor and an 81-72 win over BYU. Trevin Nell reversed by Trevin Nell. What a shot. Not known as a driver. He's more of a three-point specialist. Baylor can play for the last shot of the half. Ray J. Dennis, the lob, Michi oh. at the buzzer. And he got fouled. There is, there is no foul call. Tab and BYU led by as much as seven. And eight first half threes for BYU. Baylor started hot, but then they cooled the last part of the first half. Well, BYU makes eight threes again in this half. Baylor can't win. Jacoby Walter in the long rebound. Here comes BYU at two on one. And a steal for Jaden Nunn took it right back. Exactly how it was a bad pass, which is exactly how you play a two on one by Jaden Nunn. Jalen Bridges, who had 10 in the first half to lead Baylor. Khalifa 11 lead all scores for BYU as Eve Misi goes to work inside. Eve Misi's doing a lot more of that where he just catches up top there and then drives one on one. It was actually well defended. You force Misi into a tough shot. Another thing that BYU, Chris, they did well in the first half is they took care of the ball. We saw the turnover on the fast break. That was just the fourth turnover of the night for the Cougars. Dallin Hall gets his own miss. Another offensive rebound, and he's fouled. That's the 10th offensive rebound already for BYU. 
These Baylor guards need to take up the challenge. I mean, they, they are just getting worked on the glass. And Jay Nunn just gives up on the play. I mean, you have to understand, Dallin Hall averages four rebounds a game. He and Spencer Johnson are constantly on the glass. Jaden Nunn just picked up his third foul. And you mentioned it, and Baylor's well aware of how good of a rebounding team, especially the backcourt BYU is. A.J. Dennis weaves his way inside. What a spin move. Well, he loves that spin to the baseline. He, he doesn't always look like he's moving fast, but he's really crafty, and he's got all the shots in the paint. That was a pretty good trick shot right there. Closes to within one. Spencer Johnson from deep. Eve Misi the rebound. Here come the Bears. Ten on the shot clock. Eve Misi moves in. Misi and Baylor has taken the lead. Six straight for Baylor to start the second half. Misi's taking up the space. You know, Khalif is playing way back. And Misi typically goes right there, went to his left that time. Noah Waterman drops it in. As BYU seesaws in front. AJ Dennis, the lob, and Eden Misi forced away from the basket, gathers. We're going the other way. Offensive foul on Eden Misi. First on Misi. Well, Misi says, okay, you want to kill us offensively in the first half? Now you're going to have to play defense. And here's. A little clear out there on the offensive foul on Misi. Trevin Nell, three. Ninth three for BYU. Josh O'John went on the drive. Can't get the roll, and the rebound, Noah Waterman for the Cougars. And they set that up. Ray J. Dennis set a screen. Game like this on the road, you got to make layups. Trevin Nell missing the three, and the rebound tipped out to Baylor. Here comes Ray J. Dennis. Poked away from behind, out of bounds, deflected by Dallin Hall. Point lead for BYU. AJ Dennis. And the spin move down low, Josh Ojanwano for Baylor. They are going right at Khalifa. Again, you, he wants to play offense in that first half. Well, we're going to make him play defense. Nell trying a scoop, and it's deflected, and Baylor comes away with it. Ray J. Dennis in and out on a three, and Ali Khalifa the rebound. Is that what you need to do, though, with Khalifa? If he's going to be such a weapon offensively, attack him on the other end? Yeah, and on those drives, Rock, he's playing so far back that Ojan Muna and Misi can get a run. So they have momentum going downhill at Khalifa. Throw it to him. He's got a mismatch inside. Spencer Johnson. The ball fake, but then missed. Long rebound tipped out to Dallin Hall. He goes to the basket, and he lays it in.
Dallin Hall picked up the two fouls with four minutes left in the first half. He went to the bench. He has to be on the floor. He is their most important player. He controls everything for BYU. Ray J. Dennis, the floater. What a move. He's got all the shots against the drop coverage. And then he's very good at reading the tag guy if you come over on the roll. He's just so dynamic out of the pick and roll, especially if you give him freedom of movement. Ali Khalifa steps way out for three. Ten threes now for BYU. Tough shot and a three and air ball from Jalen Bridges and it goes to BYU. Ali Khalifa put on a show. It's your first time watching BYU. You heard they shoot threes. Are you not entertained? <laughs> because they played a soft non-conference doesn't team mean that team is not good. You know, it, those two things can be true. Soft non-conference and still good. This, look, Rent is going to come through in the NCAA tournament. That's when this is all going to wash out, and we'll figure it out, this whole, you know, which conference is the best. Driven Nell inside to Fusini Traore. Knocked away by Jacoby Walter. Last touch by Baylor. And there's seven on the shot clock for the Cougars. And BYU is, you know, one of those teams, converse to Iowa State, where they played a soft non-conference. It certainly helped their analytics. And they still have some consistency questions and things they're going to have to answer. The floater from Richie Saunders. BYU has matched their largest lead of the night. Eve Misi with a head of steam. Spin move, but he can't finish. And the rebound ripped away by Fusini Traore. Got to go to dunk that if you're Misi. And the rebound coming away with it. Jaden Nunn for Baylor. Inside 12 and a half minutes. The Baylor team that's won five of their last six games. BYU's won four of their last six as Jacoby Walter goes to work underneath. Nice job following his own shot. It was a tough shot on the baseline, but a good job following it. All the second chance points and ten made threes for BYU tonight. They've made 10 or more threes in 18 of their 26 games now. Jackson Robinson lost the handle. Here comes Baylor in transition. The lob to Caleb Lohner. Welcome back to the Marriott Center, Caleb Lohner. I don't think the, the Rock, the BYU student section, like that very much. It's a heck of a run of the floor and a really nice pass. Dallin Hall. Out of bounds, or do we have a foul? And we do have a foul on Caleb Lohner. Well, he fouled him twice. <laughs> they called the second one. Heck of a run of the floor, though, by Caleb Lohner. Something's got to give there. It's the old battle between good and evil. I'll let you choose <laughs> which one is evil. Look, Virginia's got the two best defenders in the league. Uh, that's one of the reasons outside of system why they're so good defensively. And then Carolina's got the player of the year in that league. And R.J. Davis. Could be a heck of a matchup. Got a good one going here in Provo. BYU clinging to a three-point lead. Out of bounds. Lost by Spencer Johnson. Baylor ball. This game's gotten physical. I mean, the loner fouled twice on that last one. And that's a foul. And he puts two hands on the ball handler as he starts to get to the basket. That's a foul.
Jaden Nunn from deep. Missing a three. Long rebound tipped out to Ray J. Dennis for Baylor. Kobe Walters spinning. Gets the foul on Jackson Robinson. And a technical against BYU. It's a technical on the BYU bench, not Mark Pope. The personal on Jackson Robinson, and then the technical against the BYU bench. Results in free throws for Baylor. Yeah, one of their assistant coaches jumped up. Look, it was a foul. And they're mad they didn't get the foul on the other end, which the officials missed. But the bench decorum thing has been an emphasis for the Big 12. Officials are not going to put up with it. One more for Jacoby Walter, shooting into that background. One for two, Walter now with ten points. So that was the technical free throws, and now this will be the personal foul free throws, and Jacoby Walter will shoot those. Yeah, I mean, it gets him in the air, and it's a foul. And Mark Pope just wants to call the same on the other end, and I don't blame him. One more shot for Walter. Free throw discrepancy between the two sides. You see it there. And Walter ties the game. Jackson Robinson, three. BYU sets you up with the isolation for Dallin Hall on the right-hand side, and then they have really good backside action. They run a curl of the basket, and then Jackson Robinson coming off. We know Jackson Robinson is not bashful. No, he's not. The lob for Misi, and an offensive foul on Eve Misi. Second foul on Misi. There's Dallin Hall isolated, and then, you know, again, a late switch by Misi. And here's the offensive foul. I mean, a good little, you know, Richard Saunders trying to front him, and a, a good little fight, and that off arm is an offensive foul. Ali Khalifa, way off on that three, and it goes to Baylor out of bounds. They ran the same action except for a different guy, that time for Spencer Johnson. But you're forcing Baylor to have to make a decision to, to switch, which is what Baylor's doing now with how well Khalifa has shot it. One of those adjustments that we've seen Scott right. Drew have to make in-game. Jacoby Walter, and there is Ali Khalifa the rebound, and he's having a sensational night despite that air ball. Deflected by Jalen Bridges will stay at this end 14 on the timer for BYU So hard to come over on the help side to load up For both of these defenses because of how well these teams shoot it and they space those shooters on that backside Again the reverse Richie Saunders Creative underneath They're just running that same action that first guy is a cutter to the basket. Really nice pass by Dallin Hall. Loose ball. Saunders diving for it and a foul. And that's the fourth on Jaden Nunn with 8.47 to go.
How about Richie Saunders? A basket on one end, comes down on the other end and makes a hustle play, making life hard on Jaden Nunn. There's that cut. Good finish under the rim. And then there he is. And as Mark Pope says, Richie Saunders knows one setting. Go hard. So now the reigning Big 12 player of the week, Jaden Nunn, has to sit for a little bit with four fouls. Tough shot, Jackson Robinson at the side of the backboard, but Spencer Johnson tracks it down. It falls! Jackson Robinson's third three. Largest lead of the night for BYU. BYU's 12th offensive rebound shot. And then if he doesn't have a shot, then you've got Khalifa on the pitch back. You talk to Big 12 coaches, and I've asked them about defending BYU. And they say it's a challenge, that they're unique in what they do. Is that an example of why it's difficult to it match is. up and defend BYU? Yeah, because all five of those guys, Roxy, can shoot it. Eve Meese, speaking of difficult to defend. And the athletic freshman will get to the line, the second foul on Ali Khalifa. You know, playing BYU, I've likened it to a, a football team playing the triple option in the middle of their season, like an Army or, or a Navy. You, you have to go so outside of what you normally do habit-wise defensively to game plan for them. you got to switch more, you got to fan out more. It's just a tough team to defend, and Mark Pope runs really good stuff. And because of the versatility of Khalifa, does that make it even uh, tougher to defend BYU? And then the contrast when they bring in Traore. I mean, it's just, you know, both of those guys are very good at who they are. Inside, eight to go. Richie Saunders was trying to create space against BC, and then a foul as Ali Khalifa ends up on the floor. And it's on Caleb Lohner of Baylor. Third foul on Lohner, seven. Ace of all time wins lead. Come on, Chris, it's the Conference of Champions. Let's go. <laughs> all due respect to Mr. Walton. No truck stops. All right, sorry, that's somebody else's dick. Backdoor cut the lay-in. Richie Saunders, and again, it's Ali Khalifa in ball. BYU has matched their largest lead. Caleb Lohner missing everything from the corner. I have a feeling the crowd's going to let him know it. And the rebound tipped to Jalen Bridges. Here comes Baylor. To Kobe Walter, and he's fouled and will get to the line. Third on Ali Khalifa. BYU basketball, especially with Ali Khalifa at the top here. Just a really good setup there. I mean, just a split action. By design and Saunders goes right back door and again. That's what, what I'm saying. It's like playing a triple option Like you're so used to being above your man in denial When you play BYU, you've got to be under that when they go away from the ball One more for Jacoby Walter yeah, I was talking to Ali Khalifa earlier in the season about his passing you know, he spent he was at the NBA Global Academy in Australia before he got to Charlotte. And he said, I said, you know, about your passing, he said, I had to pass. I was playing with Josh Giddy and Benedict Matherin and Dyson Daniels. I wasn't the guy on that team to shoot. Pretty good core to be around right there. Of scores. And he didn't really factor into Mark Pope's plans early in the season. It wasn't until... Fusini Traore went down with a hamstring injury, and Atiki Ali Atiki was suspended for a game. 
That opened the door for Ali Khalifa, and he's been in the lineup ever since for BYU. Fultani Traore by himself. Largest lead for BYU. Baylor defense is running in circles, and you can't zone. You can't go to the zone that's been good for Baylor because of BYU's ability to shoot it. 12-3 surge for the Cougars. Played it by Jalen Bridges' first point of the second half. It's a big shot. You know, sometimes you, you get a desperate shot when a team has momentum, and those are the shots that got to go in. It's a big one there for Jalen Bridges. Noah Waterman along the baseline. 18 assists tonight for BYU. Uh, well, Baylor's sending two to the ball, and there's a four on three on the backside, and Traore's been wide open. Last touch by Ray J. Dennis, and Baylor with a turnover. And Traore sets his screen. Baylor stays two to the ball. And then Traore's just, get, you know, he's going to settle into that pocket. And you can't tag again from the opposite side because you've had shooters spaced. And a foul out top on Josh O'Johnwina of Baylor. As BYU is in the bonus, a one and one coming up. First on Ojanwana. And it's Dallin Hall to the line. Just a 62% foul shooter. And the rebound, Jalen Bridges for Baylor. That was just the third free throw shot by BYU tonight. Well, they don't get to the line much. That's not what they do. But they are plus 24 from the three-point line tonight. That is what they do. Back in the game with four fouls is Jaden Nunn trying to attack. It's a lot of contact. It's hard to believe there's nothing there. Did you attack Nunn to try to get him out? I would just run my stuff. I mean, again, the, you really don't know who has scored for BYU. You just know BYU has scored. Their stuff has run so well for them. Strip by Ray J. Dennis. Fusini Traore on the offensive glass. And the rebound batted around, and Spencer Johnson keeps it alive for the Cougars. Noah Waterman way off on the three. And the rebound falls to Jacoby Walter. Jalen Bridges behind the defense. I mean, for Baylor, that's really fortunate because how many cracks at the basket does BYU have down there? You come away unscathed and you get a dunk on the other end. And a timeout taken by BYU. Baylor will not go away. Oh, this is uh, this is one of the rare runouts they've had. Changed it from a two to a three. So the BYU lead is six with 3.45 to go. Well, this in, Bay in uh, BYU's threes has been the story of the game. I mean, BYU's been relentless on the offensive glass. And these, you know, this bouncing man out of the timeout. And the layup missed at the rim. Richie Saunders had a clean look. And Baylor comes away with it. Just say, this comes down to Baylor getting stops. So a wide open layup out of the timeout for BYU. Eve Misi isolated and attacks with the left. So talented, so long at seven feet, and really good touch off the glass. Trevin Nell. Three! 13 threes for BYU. It's a mistake defensively by Jaden Nunn. Ray J. Dennis at the other end. And a foul will stay at this end. It's the fourth on Richie Saunders. 
too much space for Trevor Nell. I mean, he's one of the best shooters in this league. 73% of his shots in the year are threes. And Jaden Nunn, you got to be attached. I mean, you cannot go under that screen by Dallin Hall. Seven point lead for the Cougars. Kobe Walter. Blocked by Richie Saunders. Inside 10 of the shot clock. Dallin Hall turns the corner to the basket. Can't finish in the loose ball grab by Baylor. Jaden Nunn to the basket and finishes. This is must stop time right here and then you've got to collect the defensive rebound. Good timeout. 30-second timeout for Mark Pope. 1.45 to go. The BYU lead is five. We'll take a 30. This is for the third spot. BYU in the seventh. Well, this is big. You know, for Baylor, chance to, to solidify that second place right behind Houston. Jackson Robinson launching. Three! Fourth for Robinson, 14 threes for BYU. And a foul on the drive. And that'll be the sixth team foul at BYU. You know, it's a wonder this is an eight point game when a team has 14 threes and 16 offensive rebounds. I mean, that's been the game. And it's been BYU's execution. You know, they just have had Baylor's defense spinning, their heads spinning all night tonight. Baylor or BYU has shot it well, and then when they've missed, they've collected the offensive board. Next foul will put Baylor into the bonus. Either needs a sense of urgency as Ray J. Dennis. The kick out, Jalen Bridges. And a foul going for the rebound, and it's on BYU. And a one and one for Eve Misi. The fourth on Ali Khalifa. Misi two for two for the line tonight. Just 58% though on the season. 12 points, 6 rebounds for Eve Misi. Clutch free throw, get one more. So an interesting note, Chris. So tonight, Baylor's shooting 50% for the floor. BYU's 45%. Baylor has won 54 straight games, shooting 50% or higher. And right now they're at 50%, but trailing by 7. Baylor just two for their last 15 from three. You got to pick up here. I mean, you got to try to force a turnover. You don't necessarily have to foul, but you got to. Allen Hall milking the clock. It's a three possession game. I, you know. And Hall's only a 60% foul shoot. Richie Saunders. And fighting for the rebound, and EBC comes away with it. Baylor needs to go. Jaden Nunn fouled on the drive before the shot. 38 seconds and a one and one for Jaden Nunn. It's on Trevin Nell.
Yeah, definitely a foul. So one and one for Jaden Nunn. There's numbers on the year in his first trip to the line tonight for the reigning Big 12 player of the week. One more for none. Trying to cut it to five with 38 seconds. You're Baylor defensively, Chris. What do you do? You got to pick up. Try to force a turnover, and you have to foul. Make both. Now Miro Little will sub in for none. for none, but also it allows Baylor to set up their defense. It does, and none has four fouls, so you get them off the floor. Little offense, defense. Trevin Nell, he can run the baseline. Having trouble getting it in. Jackson Robinson gets it and a foul immediately on Baylor. One and one at the other end for Robinson, who's an 89% free throw shooter. You know, in those situations, the most important player on the floor is the inbounds passer. You've got to be smart enough, smart enough to run the baseline, to not turn it over. The second most important part of that is to stamp what we call stampeding the catch. You've got to come to the ball. In that case, Jackson Robinson posted up strong and he caught it strong. Because you know the defense is coming after you. Look, I get you're trying to deny and you want to try to get a steal. But would you almost try to funnel the ball to Dallin Hall because he's not a great yeah. foul shooter? You know, that's a lot easier said than done. <laughs> you know, people say that in a vacuum. Yeah, obviously. But BYU's not going to let you do that. And like you said, you've got an 89% free throw shooter there. And they clearly emphasize he posted up well and caught it strong. I mean, this is, this is the guy they want to have the ball. And so Nell goes away from him. And then you're able to come back. And like I said, you've got to catch it strong in those those situations. And Jackson Robinson was perfect there. So one more for Jackson Robinson. Can make it a three-possession game. 36.7 seconds. And it is a three-possession game. 14 now for Jackson Robinson tonight. A.J. Dennis, challenged by Fusini Traore. And Jackson Robinson pulls it down. And they finally foul Robinson. And Scott Drew was urging his guys to foul him. No, I don't think he was. I, I don't think he wanted them to foul them. Because if you if you would, they, they should have done it up. I mean, you've got no time to waste. You got to lay a foul immediately. Jaden Nunn fouls out, and it's Jackson Robinson back to the line for a one and one. Yeah, I, I will also say this, Roxy. We talked about the threes, the offensive rebounding. This is the best BYU's defense has looked in about three games. You know, the last two have not been good defensively for BYU. They did a nice job, especially in the second half on Baylor. Mark Pope was really frustrated with their defensive performance yeah. against Oklahoma State last Saturday. Step back from Jalen Bridges. Rebound, Fusini Traore. And a foul with 7.8. Our player of the game brought to you by Phillips 66. And what a night for Ali Khalifa of BYU. I mean, just he, he was involved in so much tonight. Look at that stat line. The efficiency, the threes, the three-point shooting changed the game in the first half. And of course, his ability to pass it. He was on the offensive glass. What a game from him, a guy who has battled injury. He's been dealing with a cranky knee all season. One more for Fusini Traore. A 
What a win this will be for BYU and what an environment it's been at the Marriott Center tonight. Sure has. Near a little to the basket, lays it in. 2.1 to go. And BYU win number 19 for the Cougars. They've won five of their last seven. And a strong effort for Mark Polk's team here at home tonight. Got to protect home.